previously in Dragon's Maw. Skyfall was once an experimental cloud ship project headed by a black ops wing of the Grand Pegasus Enclave, then moved to a privately funded operation after the project was dropped. Uh, Industrial Sabotage uh, basically dropped this ship out of the sky before it was finished, and it became the fallen city of Skyfall after prospectors in the Dragon's Maw discovered it. When the Maulers discovered the ship, they found that their very own Flotsam was deeply connected to the ship's history. She was the daughter of the Enclave legislature and nobility that were directly behind the project. They nearly blew up the ship in the process of reactivating it with Flotsam's DNA permissions, but they managed to save the town and hand over control to the Skyfall's current authorities. As they continued their adventures, Skyfall's engineers tasked Flotsam and the Maulers with finding rare tech and spare scrap out in the wasteland to help finish repairs. After dealing with the problems of Stable 998 and Ribcage, they seem to have collected everything Skyfall needs. Two crazy rocket-powered Trojan horses later, the party agreed to split up into teams to tackle different tasks in the time they had remaining before the war begins. This session, we focus on the ones who stayed at Skyfall to complete the impossible task of making the crashed cloud ship fly. So after your daring ride in two rickety horse-shaped rocket things from Ribcage to uh, from Ribcage to Skyfall to the immense shock of all the guards in the city and whatnot. Um, basically, the team of, uh, you know, Zenkar and Firelight and Tempered Steel spend some time in the town kind of shopping for supplies and whatnot before, uh, heading out to try and re recruit the Hellhounds. Uh, as for you guys, uh, Blinky kind of leads the way, uh, getting some of the guards to help carry up the crates full of supplies and her, you know, her wares that she's going to help move back into her old store. And, uh, Jibble sort of looks at the powder keg and says, why don't you help her with that? Powder keg probably would not like taking orders from you, but would basically find the idea agreeable and uh, heads off with Blinky. Right, that's the volatile element taken care of. I thought I was volatile. Yes, but that's just your explosive. So your personality is very uh, stable. Oh, thank you. So, uh, pretty soon after you all enter the city, uh, you see a few of, like, a pretty, pretty sizable group approaching you. Uh, some civilians of the town, uh, some engineer-looking ponies, some guards, and, of course, Mayor Chase, the, the griffin, heading your way. Oh, Lots yes! Waves nervously. Guess who? Yes, we're here to repair the ship and fly it into battle. Chase Jivolt. lets out a sigh. Yvonne, we could have worked up to that. Yes, well, let's not waste any time, shall we? And he just sort of walks up to Chase. What needs doing where? We Hello, Javolt. Nice to see you, too. Hi, Mary oh, Chase. Yes, this, is, this is my sister, Raven. That Raven, the Raven kind of waves at the mare as well. She's only half as crazy as I am, but she's twice as talented, so it all evens out. Raven chuckles. Chase kind of gives Raven a respectful nod and says, uh, I guess, welcome to our fair town. So what's that about trying to get this thing to fly? We have the rest of the supplies you need. Yeah. I mean, Silver Wrench gave me a shopping list if I, when I asked if I could do anything to help, and I know that your scavenging crews have got a bunch of stuff. And yeah, well, well some of it, yeah. We've got the rest. We uh, You've found got the rest? Yeah, we the found engineers, a The yeah. engineers look very surprised as well. I think Powder and Blinky are over at where Blinky used to work, kind of getting stuff sorted out. Chase gestures for the guards to uh, basically head in that direction to inventory the items, assuming Blinky uh, knows what to give them. Um, Flotsam will have given her the shopping list. All right. So uh, a, few, a few of them head off. Uh, so the crowd kind of cuts in half a bit, and Chase and, actually, by this point, Silver Wrench has caught up with you guys, and, uh, Silver Wrench walks up to you, Flotsam, and says, so, so you got everything? Well, I mean, we didn't get the stuff that you already got. Well, yeah, we but... got, I mean, we got the crystal we ball got the and, and the, the Mr. Handy and stuff. Mr. Handy, and some scrap here and there, but... But yeah, well, we... And you already sent us that lightning weapon thing, right? Uh-huh. So um, okay, so what? About, so you got a power generator, right? Mm-hmm. It's all at Blinky's. See, we came and a, um, and a cloud actuator. Uh huh. We came across the oh, stable. Oh, oh. 
So you also got the RC car or RC <laughs> vehicle yeah. and enough scrap electronics and metal. Flotsam nods. That okay? Yikes, Flotsam. That's Chase and Silver and share a very sort of surprised look. And oh, did we bring? No, I don't know if we did. I I can't remember if we were going to give Skyfall a Protectron as well, but I don't know if there would have been room for it if we had. Um, some of them were going to stay at the stable. Some of them were going to basically help Slinger maintain peace. I don't know if any some... were allocated. I mean, it probably came up in discussion, but I don't know if any were officially allocated for that task. I think we'll probably leave it as a no for now then. All right. Because I know one or two are going to Hayditch, so that probably accounts for all of them. Yeah. But yeah, um, Ormar was really nice. He let us take the stuff that the stable wasn't using. Did you guys hear about Ormar? I can't remember what Smack Top broadcast on the radio. Well, kind of a condensed version, but yikes. Long story short, Ormar's pretty cool. So we have a dragon on our side. Kind of. He doesn't have a body. <laughs> All right. And he's not really interested in anything except for, you know, the inhabitants of his stable. Right, right. Well, hmm. Chase looks to Silver Wrench. So, is this, is this really everything that you, you needed? Silver Wrench considers this news and says, Well, I mean, we've still got some major problems to deal with, but theoretically, if we could solve those problems and have the time to apply these materials to the repairs... I mean, this is basically what we need. We could theoretically... He trails off with Chase. is just like, we could make this ship fly. Oh, you know. crap. There's... Mm, you guys know that the that war is coming, right? Uh, yeah, that's been basically all... It's hard to listen to Radio Crackle for the past hour or so. But yes, we're aware. Smack Talk's just trying to, you know, keep everyone informed and make sure everyone stays safe. Yeah, we, we, we get it, Flossum. Just... He looks at your vault, then to Tibbs, then to you, and says, What are you going to ask? Well, the big problem with the war is that there is still one dragon active on the enemy side, essentially neutralizing our magic and allowing them theirs. We need to get to the dragon fast, but the enemy probably doesn't have many flyers, and he just gestures around. Just a little drop-off, you understand. Maybe some bombs on occasion, but mostly just a drop-off. Chase puts one claw over his eyes, pinches the bridge of his beak, and says, You want, for Skyfall's already very dangerous maiden voyage, because we don't know if this thing's even going to hold together or not, you want us to, as our maiden voyage, take it into enemy territory and drop payloads. Essentially. <sighs> well, how about we just say one thing at a time? Sure. We're not... First... Sorry. Silver Wrench pipes up at this. I mean, even with... We've still got... Oh, we've still got major repairs to do, and, you know... Uh, we... Well, then, let's go get them done! And then even if we solve those the problems we have, it could still be uh, a few few days before this ship is really fully repaired. It's okay and... if we can't. We just... And to try. Uh, Let's puts his claw oh, on Silver Wrench's shoulder and says, The best engineers take a few days' work and push it through six hours because they need to. I think we have those, eight hours, those, actually. Those so. are crazy engineers that Jibold's don't, just that don't eat or probably. drink or sleep. Jibold's Jibold's Hi. I haven't slept in I don't know how long. Jibol sort of gestures outside the ship and says, If you look outside, you'll notice the giant rocket-propelled corpses of horses that we rode in on. They were metal horses. Yeah, I heard about that. What Jibol is trying to say is, it's not just him who's insane. It's all of us. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I'm gonna help tally up <laughs> stuff, um... Chase, can you kind of fill them in on stuff? Chase just shrugs and says, Yeah, I've got plenty of catching up to do, and this kind of takes priority, so. You run along, Silver Wrench. The pony Good luck. nods and heads over to Blinky's shop. Don't let Powder Keg scare you. <laughs> uh, Chase just gestures for you guys to tag along as he kind of makes his way through the ship. 
Watson flaps after him, carrying Craggy. Uh, Javolt and Igor, and I guess tag along, and does Raven come along? Yeah, Raven come along, comes along with you guys. Speaking of our rocket-powered uh, vehicles, uh, did you handle that very well, Raven, or...? It was exciting, actually. It kind of reminded me of being back at the university. Ah, yes. The races! I'm remembering the races now! Oh, amazing, weren't... Oh, goodness. <laughs> Remember that time I broke all my legs and I crossed the finish line first still? Well, it was kind of... It was a very close thing between you and uh, you and the, this other griffin in the AI wing. Uh, yeah. You guys, you guys basically argued about who actually won that for, for weeks. Mm. Yes, well, Flotsam just looks at the two of them and then down at Craggy and says, "Yeah, they're definitely related." <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, Chase says. There's basically one very, very big problem with getting this ship operational, and that... I'm going, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume it's the computer. Actually, the computer is probably the most stable part of everything right now, uh, at least as far as what functions we have available, and its reliability is actually been really good. Uh, you know, especially since it hasn't seen a whole lot of use, and the whole chamber's just incredibly reinforced, so... But it's the, uh... It's the underside of the hole. What's uh, up with it? Well, the ship, the ship crashed. The ship crashed. So, right. so there's the bottom, multiple the bo- options. The, bo- the bottom of the ship is somewhat buried beneath the ground. Uh, there's breaches uh, and whatnot. And we're having trouble finding a way to either... To, to kind of find the rooms that we can actually make repairs down there. Hmm. Either to... One of the engineers suggesting suggested propping up the whole ship ten feet, or uh, excavating beneath it so that they have some room down there. But oh, hmm. But basically, that's our main problem: is that we've got, and that's and that's also down where the uh, rapid cloud actuator equipment is. You know, the stuff that actually keeps the the machine, you know, gives it its upward thrust. And. Um. Okay, so basically, you'd need to do repairs down there first before you can get the ship in any way in the air. We can replace all the rest of the other tech, you know, the the force thrusters, you know, the shield generator, you know, even the cannons, although we wouldn't dare risk firing them. But, uh, you know, but the we, main we, basi- we is... basically don't get off the ground until uh, we can, at the very least, make it so we can do repairs down there. Because mm-hmm. at the, the very lowest levels of the ship are wrecked. Okay. I think we can probably figure something out as far as that goes. I do have one thing that I should that's kind of been worrying me a bit. If we do get this thing airborne, lots and frowns, I don't want to put anyone... I mean, we're all in danger from the executive anyway. That's that's not something I'm, you know, Every, having... Everyone to... in this ship will be going along for a ride, yeah. Yeah, but basically everyone's in danger from the executive anyway, like whether we get the ship in the air or not. But if we get the ship in the air, is that gonna uh, is that gonna draw the Enclave's attention? I don't see why. It, actually, that reminds me of another issue, but I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Hmm. But one thing at a time, Flotsam. Yeah, you're right. I Sorry. Mean, I mean, ever, you know, since, ever since, you know... Uh, my predecessors found this ship. We, you know, people have been wanting to see if we can get it off the ground again. So, I mean, basically, everyone who's in the know on this is kind of excited for it. Here's a crazy idea. If we can't get rid of the ground, why not take the ground with us? Because it's not structurally sound. Oh, so, good point. I was so just thinking. Basically, basically, the bottom part of the ship is full of, like, sand and whatever from where it crashed. Yeah, big old uh, holes and, you know, rock and uh, soil actually, beneath it. Assuming we could fix everything else, how high could the ship get up without fixing the breaches? I'm just saying, like, if we could get it flying ten feet or whatever. That's what I was thinking. If we got the thrusters working just enough to kind of hover the ship, that would make it a lot easier to get all the debris out. And that would probably be a much safer small-scale test than just trying to go for it all at once. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Let's just 
pick there's up the still, ship. There's still a lot of dirt and sand in the cloud actuator room. It take it takes some serious digging to at least get that out and working. And I'd have well, that... I, and my engineers would be worried about basically the balance of the ship. It might without proper ballast in that part of the ship or whatever has been done to that. It we might tip over a little bit, but that that's that's a slim chance. I've just been warned about that along with slim chances of just spontaneous combustion and, you know, attracting lightning bolts and a million other things. Well, I can do a little bit of weather manipulation. Not very much, but... <clears throat> well, how, how about um, I go take a look at the cloud actuator down in the hold? I mean, would, would that be okay? Well, there. I mentioned there was one other thing that you'll probably be interested in kind of a bit more presently. Oh? Regarding the Enclave. Oh. We found another one. Another... Another, uh, uh, Enclave infiltrator. Another... What? Besides Astral Comet? Yeah, besides Astral Comet. Flotsam goes pale. Well, what did they do? Did did they let the Enclave know? No, we... we, I, I don't know what he managed to do. He's not really talking to us. Uh... We managed to catch him before he actually... I think before we... He did anything too bad. But he did say something interesting. What? He said he wanted to talk to Sweetcake if she was available. Flotsam backs the fuck up. <laughs> no. Hmm. She just turns and flies into the nearest person who is probably Javolt and just hugs tight. This I... is not a good day. This is not a good day. This is not a good day. Javolt sort of awkwardly pats her shoulder and, uh, Ray, sort of... Raven also kind of gives you a kind of comes in for a hug as well. I don't she think... kind of tries to focus on um, taking steadying breaths and then kind of pulls he's, away. And... He's he's safely locked up in the brig right now. He's of no danger to anyone, and from from our talks with him, he's very quiet and stoic. But my gut says he's honorable. I guess if that means but anything. Still, but still enclave. Still enclave. Yeah. Do you know his name? <sighs> Called himself Midnight Clear. Midnight Clear. Okay, that's not a name I recognize. I guess I can go talk to him first. I guess, get it over with? That's what I was thinking. And, okay. well, you know, I guess we could wander along. Raven, Raven kind of looks to you, Javolt, and says, Um, maybe before... The zebra leaves, maybe we can take care of... Yeah, that. Uh, did, did Zenkarn already get out? Yeah, he's already out. But uh, we can. I can basically just run him as an NPC for this. Oh, so this is this is before they... Yeah, this is... I guess we run into Zenkarn... Yeah, because we... they, they basically, uh, they're kind of shopping and yeah. recuperating for a bit before they head out. Javon sort of awkwardly glances from Flotsam to Raven and... Uh, Clears his throat and uh, sort of takes Raven to the pit. A sign says, "This is actually a very delicate situation for her." Flotsam kind of looks over at Javolt and says, "Um, Javolt." Yeah. Yes. Maybe. What? I'm yeah, sorry. you and Raven need to do something. I mean, I think I might want to talk to this pony on my own, but you know. Tibbs can always come with me and, and be nearby if I need him. If you and Raven need to do something, that's okay. Right, that's that's actually a good idea. I'll go find out where Tibbs is selling drugs and send him down to the prison. Thank you. And also gives him another quick hug. And Javon sort of hug nuzzles her back and quickly says, Right, so we're going to find the uh, crazy doctor and the necromancer, and then we'll go down and meet you at the cloud actuator chamber. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you then. Sounds like a plan. Chase uh, nods and offers to uh, escort Flotsam to the prison. Um, Flotsam will accept and let Craggy down to walk next to her. All right. Um, while you guys are on your way, uh, Javolt, uh, you're able to. You and Raven are able to find uh, Zenkarn fairly easily. Insist on the summoning before they head out to face the Hellhounds. Right. Uh, and. I guess Enkarn would would ask if you have basically a private place to do this, so that he's not summoning a spirit in the middle of town. Uh, Joel, uh sort of considers heading for Blinkies, but then realizes there's a lot of stuff going on there, and says, 
why don't we go to the library and see if we can get a private room back in, you know. All right. Uh, the others who seem to find this agreeable. Uh, you head to the library and uh, look out and uh, strong of her there, basically where you left them. They, they seem happy to see you. Hi. Uh, do you mind if we borrow a room to talk to uh, dead people? Not that you aren't nice and all, but you're not dead anymore, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look out and strong of share kind of a weird look, but seem to remember that you are, in fact, Javolt. <laughs> and offer you the temporary use of the of the basically living room in the back. Right. So you, Raven, and uh, Zenkarn head back to that room. And Zenkarn, uh, once the doors close and you've achieved some semblance of privacy, starts uh, breaking out some chalk and drawing runes on the ground, and uh, asks Raven to kind of stand at the at the at one edge of the uh, circle so that he can basically call out to. Jenny's spirit through her, since she's going to be the, the focus of this. <coughs> yes, end card's getting NPC to get in the chat. Uh, insert Snarky Zen card. Yeah, for some reason he's having trouble with the call, so... Even though he's here, he's having trouble with the call, so I'm kind of having to NPC him. So, he's much better at describing this than I am, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, Javolt, you feel a sort of chill fall upon the room as Zenkarn brings out his staff and starts to channel his necromantic power uh, through Raven. The room darkens and you find your vision kind of blurring a bit. You know, specks of light dance across your vision and then before you and Raven uh, you kind of see some wisps of some kind of smoke or mist kind of gathering before you. Kind of faint but but kind of, kind of just a vaguely defined haze. Right. So uh Javont sort of <clears throat> clears his throat and says, Ah, uh, hello, is that, is that you, Jenny? Zenkarn says, I'm, I'm trying. It's, he's, she's not quite here yet. It's, uh, this is a very old spirit you're trying to conjure. I right. Need, for lack of a better, for lack of better words, I need you guys to call to her, basically. And, uh, Javont sort of nudges Raven and flicks an ear at the vague spirit. Raven just seems kind of nervous, shaking at the whole prospect of what's happening before her, but she just steps forward into the circle and says, um, Jenny, are you, the, are you there? <laughs> it's me, Mom. And slowly but steadily, the mist comes together until you see a ghostly form of a very small female donkey smiling right. up at Raven and at Ujival. Oh. Am I recognizable? I mean, with the goggles and all? Uh, mom, uncle, and Raven just starts to cry a bit. She kind of reaches to hug her, but she... There's some resistance as her who's meet the, the ghost, but she mostly passes through. And Jenny gives her a sad smile. Hey, mom. It's been so long. And Raven's just completely consumed by emotion, not sure what to say. And, um, uh, um, sort of nods and uh, awkwardly uh, clears his throat and says, "Yeah. Um. So how uh, how have things been in uh wherever?" Oh, I'm I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to talk about that. Oh. It's it's okay. Just we're all just kind of there. But right. I just I I left you guys really early on and. I'm sorry I, I did what I did. I shouldn't have tried messing with your, your science stuff, Javol, even though I really wanted to. No, 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 no. Learning is important, and making mistakes is part of that. You shouldn't have done it alone, is the thing. Hmm. But you did make a big explosion, and that was what I was uh, working for at the time, I think. Raven finally gets up from kind of sobbing on Jenny's ghostly shoulder and says... It's okay, honey. I I just I'm glad to hear you. And Jenny says it's okay. I I was happy living with you guys, and I'm not unhappy. I'm just sad that I caused you guys so much my stupid mistake. And I really miss you guys because you guys are so strong for still making your science work out here. I've been I've been watching when I can. You won't uh, sort of 
perks an ear at that and says, um, yeah, science. And he sort of awkwardly glances at the chalk circle and... Well, science, science and magic. It wasn't really what we were there, what you guys were there to study at the, at the school, but, you know, there's room for both. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, are there, it is good to hear from you again, of course. I'm just curious if there's anything we should be doing or anything, you know, to. For me? Yes. She shakes her head and says, just, just live, just remember me, but don't, don't let me bring you too much pain. And, uh, Juvent, uh, sort of, what's his name? And if it were, uh, theoretically possible to bring you back, just throwing that option out there. <laughs> oh, Uncle Juvent, Uncle Volty. <sighs> it's been, I, I've gotten comfortable where I am. And watching over you guys, I can see this place is kind of painful. It's what happened, happened. It made you who you are. And I'll see you eventually. Either way. Right. Javol, you can, you don't have to worry about finding me anymore. You can, you can pursue science the way you want. Well, I never really wanted to pursue it alone. You have, you have your sister. You have your friends. Javol, you, you are an insanely lucky uncle. Hmm. Well, yes, I suppose I've lived this long with some of my crazier schemes. I must have at least a little bit of luck. And she, and he sort of turns to Raven and says, she's grown up a lot since she's died. I kind of had to. It's been a, it's been a long time. And Raven just nods. Between her and Jenny, it doesn't seem like there need to be words just kind of the looks in each other's eyes seem to be enough to say what they both want to say and what needs to be said. Right, uh, Javon sort of clears his throat and says, you know, I'm not entirely sure I'm... Hmm. And then he turns to Zenkarn and says, should we give them a couple of moments? Uh, and he licks an ear toward the door. Zenkarn kind of grimaces at you. Uh, I kind of need to be channeling here, and you're also kind of part of the focus. Ah, oh, right. Just just making sure, I mean. And Raven shakes her head and says, no, I, I want you here, Javon. This is our family. Right. This is what's left of our family. Well, for now. Anyway, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Jenny gets this kind of weird gleam in her eyes. You're gonna... You're gonna... You're gonna bring new cousins into your world? Maybe. If I can find, you know... The rights, lady. It's not something that you do lightly, of course. Raven just kind of just kind of gives you an incredulous look. It's like this is my daughter. You can't talk about that in front of my daughter. Javol blinks, and no, he doesn't actually blink. He uh, flicks an eyebrow up, and he sort of clears his throat and says, "You might have wanted to tell me that uh, twenty years ago." <laughs> Raven's eyes go super <laughs> wide. <laughs> And Jenny just kind of giggles. To be fair, she only asked after she saw the bunnies. <laughs> Raven <laughs> rounds on you, <laughs> grabs you by the shoulder, and <laughs> lifts up her over like she's going to punch you in the face. Why, I ought to... And I wasn't the responsible for the bunnies. That was the gripping. Jenny's laughter pierces the <laughs> suddenly hostile uh, tone in the room. And Raven calms down. Like I said, though, all uh, mechanical humor aside, it is a serious, serious uh, concern. So I would need someone that could help me in the uh, raising aspect, which, you know, I've had mixed results with. <laughs> Jenny shakes her head, smiling, and says, It's, it's whatever works either way, Uncle, you know, whatever makes you happy. That's, and you know that's all I want is for you guys to be happy down here while you're it's it's not out of the realm of possibility that you might get a little brother or sister someday, is it? He turns to Raven questioningly. Raven just kinda looks a bit shell shocked and says, I haven't thought about anything like that in a long time. Well, I mean, just on the purely physical level. You haven't uh Javolt. No, but still Javolt. 
Well, I mean, I am your older brother. This is something I need to ask you about. No, it's not something you need to... Oh, Javolt. You know... As it's... tactful as ever. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny laughs again and says, Yeah, that's what made him a fun uncle to hang out with. And Raven just gives her a <laughs> withering glare. <laughs> and Zenkarn looks slightly disgusted by this. Oh, yes, and this is Zenkarn. He's, uh, he's the one hosting this meeting. Jenny waves. And he's also in love with the shape-shifting love eater. <laughs> Zenkarn. <laughs> Jenny laughs at the joke. Zenkarn just glares at you. <laughs> Not in front of the little girl, man. Not cool. Oh, uh, well, actually, do you still consider yourself little? I mean, you ten years and all that. This this was what my spirit was like when I died. This is what you called here. Yes. I kind I'll... of am. I kind, I'm kind of not. This is one of those things you can't actually talk about, isn't it? She shakes her head. Dang it. Oh, well, I'm sure I'll have scientific logs when I get up there. Ooh, uh, that, that'll be fun. Have you... If you've been watching, you have uh, you know about Monitor, right? Oh, yeah, that was... That was a lot of fun. And, uh, well, I'm just curious how you feel about her. I think she's cool. Well, yes, obviously. I meant more little sister, cousin... She's she's an AI that kind of looks like me. I don't know. I, I'm not really old enough to know how that works on robot life sort of thing. I'm just, I'm still kind of a kid. Yeah, well. Anyway, it's it's been good having this talk. and Yeah. Yeah. And Raven nods, kind of tearing up again. And of course, I'll just, I'll look after your mother and she will... Probably not look after me, since that's too hard to work for her. <laughs> Raven gives you a shove and says, Someone needs to look out for you. If only so you stop making social faux pas all the time, every day. Oh yes, but that's why I picked up the zebra and his friends. Senkarn rolls his eyes. Jenny uh, giggles again and says, So, is it time? If Once eh. once we're done, I've watched you guys for a while, but I also I kind of want to move on as well. Am I going to be okay leaving you guys here? Jamont uh, gives a long look at Raven. Raven, tears all openly streaming down her face, just looks at you, Javolt, and smiles and nods. Well, I suppose, yes. And if it isn't, we'll break the universe and let you know. <laughs> okay, Mom. Okay, Uncle, Uncle Volty. Love you, Raven says. Love you, too. Javolt tries to give one last nuzzle to the ghost, somehow. You, the ghostly form feels kind of cold against you. You kind of feel a bit of resistance there. Yep. And, and I guess that's it, I guess. Zenkarn brings down the channeling, and, uh, and Jenny's ghostly form kind of dissolves into the air. And I guess he goes out shopping while we <laughs> recover emotionally? Uh, yeah, Zenkarn's, Zen, Zenkarn's gonna just kind of take his leave and, uh, meet up with his, uh, uh, Senkarn's like, enough touching family stuff, I'm going to buy explosives. I'll send you the bill. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well. All right. Anyway. So, uh, while that's happening, and I hate to cut off so soon after that moment, but I hope I hope that was satisfying. Uh, yeah, that's good. Oh, um, I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> uh, Flotsam. Uh, Mayor Chase escorts you back to the brig that you're kind of familiar with at this point. <laughs> you've put yeah. you've put quite a few ponies in here. The guards, one of the guards recognizes you as you approach and just kind of shields his eyes so <laughs> to avoid another cute induced heart attack. Flotsam uh, smiles sheepishly in his direction. Um, Mayor Chase. Yeah. This midnight clear pony. Um, who asked to see Sweet Cake. Did you tell him that you knew who that is? I gave him a vague sort of, well, maybe if that pony comes around, I might tell her you're here, sort of answer. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna tell him right away unless I have to. You you deal with him however you want to, you need to deal with him. I okay. just figured you're connected to this ship. You've helped us so much. You, you know, you might want some answers. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mayor Chase. Can I give you a hug? Of course. Griffin Bates gives you a big old hug. Nuzzle. 
Okay. I've always, I've always liked you the most out of all the Maulers. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Don't tell the others that. Okay. Of course, of course. I mean, they've all been helpful in their own ways, but you know. <laughs> Watson looks pleased anyway. You, you get the least on my nerves most of the time. Oh boy. Okay. Right. Um. I've got a crap ton of work to do, so can I uh, leave you here? Of course. Um. The, you can yeah, I'll just call for the guards on. if you need them. Okay, we'll do. Come on, Craggy. And um, she goes in. All right. So one of the guards tells you which cell this particular pony you're looking for is in, uh, and you head down the hall, passing by uh, Astro Comet, who looks to be asleep, and uh, one you recognize as uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, assassin who had once disguised himself as the impeccable Mr. Pickle. <laughs> Lethal Arrow. Lethal Arrow, yeah. Ah, oh, you remembered that stupid name. Wow. <laughs> and uh, the uh, cell where uh, where uh, Chica had once been is still empty. And finally you come to near the end, and uh, you find this sort of very burly-looking uh, dark blue uh, pony just kind of resting on this metal cot. Um, Flotsam kind of gra- glances down nervously to Craggy, um, Ruffles her feathers a little, then sort of makes sure her wings are flattened against her sides. She's incredibly self-conscious about being a Pegasus right now, and um, clears her throat. <clears> throat. Hello? The pony very stiffly gets up, and uh, with sort of very precise movements, kind of lifts up off the bed, steps off, and turns to face you directly, and says, Yes, Philly? Um, I was told that... Um... <sighs> You needed to speak to someone called Sweetcake, and I came to ask why. He kind of regards you with a close look for a while, and then says, Well, to be honest, when I made that request, I wasn't sure it would ever be satisfied. I assume I assume you know why I'm here in this cell. Chase said that you were trying to infiltrate? I was trying to figure out, figure out uh, what happened to our first agent. He kind of smirks and waves over to the cell where Astro Comet is sulking, and he continues, and figure out what the status of the ship was, why the uh, presumed security measures hadn't worked, why yes, why they managed to unlock certain functions. He kind of looks off to the side as he says that. How, um, how did the Enclave get wind of this? Of Skyfall? Of it becoming functional again? Well... <sighs> well, I don't know if the Enclave knows just yet. I, that's what I found out while I was here. Or what's so, base? <laughs> you want me to tell you the whole story? I'm sure. Watson I'm sure Astro Comet told you some of it. Watson sits down and looks up expectantly. Well, you know, since uh, the Single Pony Project was uh, Single Pegasus Project was uh, taken over by uh, freaking Stable Dweller. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, the Enclave has been looking for whatever they can to take it back, and so. The old abandoned G- GES New Dawn project was at the top of that list. We sent an agent in, didn't hear back, so decided they decided to send another one. With uh, much less suspicious credentials, but it turns out that they are very paranoid right now, so who knew? <laughs> so Astral Comet never did report back to the Enclave, then? No. Well, it, it was basically quite a while since his last uh, report. Enough to warrant uh, concern. So why did they, um... Who who are you in the Enclave? How do you know about Sweet Cake? Because Sweet Cake's father was very insistent I look for any any signs of her. Well, a shiver goes right through her. <clears throat> right before I left for my mission, I was pulled aside by one of the old council ponies. So, um, he's, uh, he's still alive and well, then? Oh, uh, yeah, both the Sweet Cake's parents are still alive, though, and much more dire straits than they were before now that the cloud cover has gone away and there's not much left of the old Pegasus cities. Stable dwellers forcing us to basically live on the ground with the rest of you. Well, there goes a lot of their power and influence. It's not so bad down here on the ground? No. It's, you know, it's got, it's it's certainly a lot more dangerous, but you know, there's, there are, there's civilization, civilization and society down here. It's hard not to see that. Danger's Ruby kind of Rose. exciting, too. Ruby Rose couldn't see it. She she looks up. She put a fail safe on this ship so that it would blow up if it was activated at ground level. Yep. Did you know that? I was informed about that. Our uh, perception of the of the wasteland below was very different about a decade ago. 
Of course, I mean, there's always been different opinions, but honestly, that was probably the most common belief that anyone down here would be would be too dangerous to have our technology. What do they think now? Now that a ground pony has grounded them. They're very angry. <laughs> very angry. Yeah. But the problem is they've or- they've lost pretty much all their ships in the big old attack. They've lost all their land. But I'm a soldier, I don't. I try not to think too hard about that. Just uh, do what I can to protect who I can. I guess I can kind of respect that. Flotsam is just still looking very troubled, preoccupied. <sighs> so then, you were asked to look for um, this, this this pony. <sighs> Did well, I was. That was basically a, a theory that was abounding. That hey, Skyfall's occupied. They might have activated the systems. Why hasn't it blown up? Well, maybe they had some kind of DNA access. It could be either someone related to someone on the old project, or at the most remote chance, it could be Sweet Cake, the one outlier, the one who was never, who was reported missing and never found. So, up until Skyfall. I guess everyone probably assumed she was dead, huh? Yeah, it was safe to assume. It'd been a decade, and no one was... I mean, no one was going to really put that much effort into a ground-based search party. I mean, certainly, certainly, you know, recon, to at least uh, have a good idea of what was going on down here, but... You know, How do you know she was on the ground? What if, Whatever happened to her, anyway? She. W- it's assumed that she was at the factory when the sabotage hit, and she fell... Flotsam nods. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I guess that can't have been nice for them. Her parents, I mean. No, they were they were fairly devastated by that. Yeah, honestly, I I didn't I didn't I haven't really met with any of the council ponies or you know celebrities like Ruby Rose before I was sent off on this mission. I don't know. I don't know about the ponies themselves, at least as far as character goes. But it, I would think that the two of them would make a happy little child together. You know, one of the big power couples of the Enclave, as it were. Yeah. Too bad she's gone. Yeah, I suppose Sweet Cake is gone, isn't she? Yeah. My name's Flotsam. Nice to meet you, Flotsam. Midnight clear. Um, Flotsam is actually tearing up a little at this point. He's kind of regarding you with this very clear, sort of knowing look in his eyes. I have a good family. Earth ponies. Took me in when they found me. Raised me up right. Fl- I am Flotsam, who I am. Huh? Sorry? Flotsam. Yeah, exactly. They found me washed up on a riverbank, so they called me Flotsam. A cute little name. And yeah. it's infinitely less saccharine than sweet cake. Yeah. Flotsam has some character to it. Yeah. You know, I don't really like the Enclave very much, and I especially don't like Ruby Rose for what she tried to do to Skyfall, but... No, they're not the nicest ponies in the world. But... All the same. I guess it's... They're not going to get their little girl back. She doesn't exist anymore. There's only me. Well, after ten years... After ten years, nothing's the same. Still, to solve the mystery of what happened ten years ago, that can bring off a lot of weight off the pony's shoulders. I'm not sure they can know. Think they'll come after you? I don't know. I mean, apart from anything else, how are we going to tell them? Uh, you're not getting out of here. <laughs> and so, sorry, had to answer. Oh, okay, sorry. I wasn't sure if um, it just cut, of the sound had just cut out for me. Yeah. Um, Midnight Clear says, well, if I was going to meet Sweet Cake and she was on good terms, the mayor asked for a favor. I, um, I'll need to think about it, okay? So that I, at the very least I can complete my mission and... Let them know the truth. The whole truth. Because, at least it's my belief, and you are free to disagree, but no matter what kind of ponies they are, as a mother and father who were four times stricken with grief, they might deserve to know. Four times? No, for for a time. Oh, for a time. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Hard. No, no, don't worry. I kind of mumbled. Flotsam looks very uncertain. You would never see me again. And what else? if I'm honest, I don't know if the Enclave has... The kind of strength to really take back this, though I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to guarantee whether or not they'd try and find you again themselves. I can't. I can't. I can't risk that. I can't face them. She tried to kill everyone here. 
indirectly, but yeah. They're enclave. Yeah, they are. Enclave to the bone. I'm going to think about it, but... I won't, no. I won't uh, hold my wings up. Yeah. It was nice talking to you, Flotsam. Yeah, thanks. You're pretty okay. I'll take that as a compliment. She um kind of picks Craggy up and puts him on uh on her back and then just um uh walks back down the corridor back to um outside the brig. All right. The guards kind of look at you as you come out. One says, "So, uh, get what you needed or whatever you were doing in there." Flotsam just kind of slumps into the nearest guard and says, "In hugs, please." One of them goes, "Ah." Gives you a big old hug. Lots and hugs. Um, and she kind of takes a deep breath through her nose and goes, Okay, um, I'm going to go find um, the cloud actuator. Yes, what's the best way to get there? Ooh. The, the lower levels. The lowest level of the ship. Uh, ooh. Well, there's... Uh, most of the entrances are kind of blocked up. I guess the one way that's left, and it's still going to be crowded down there, but... Probably next to the, uh, I mean, next to the missile bay. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. And Flotsam will, um, trot off with Craggy to go down to the lower level. And we have confirmation. Dan is not going to be joining us tonight, so. One another two player se- session. <laughs> another another two player session. Let's go. Uh, yeah, funny how, funny how schedules work when they're at the last minute. So, uh, Jolt. After you and uh, Raven have had a moment to kind of process what just happened with the summoning, uh, do you want to also make your way down to the lowest Yeah, ship? pretty much. Jewelt is going to try to navigate on his own as though he knows the place. Okay. Well, you, you make your way down level through level, and you manage to bump into uh, Flotsam along the way. Ah, yes. How was your emotionally charged meeting? Oh, you had one too? Yep. Pretty much. Exhausting, aren't they? Uh, somewhat. They can also be invigorating. Yeah. I'll um. I'll maybe tell you guys about it later. I have a decision to make. But uh, anyway, that's not important right now. We should we should get downstairs. Right. And downstairs is this way. And you you end up going kind of t- you you reach a door when and when you open it, it's completely filled up with uh, dirt and rocks. Yep, definitely the right way. Right. So we have two options. Dig through this or find another door. Watson looks for another door. Uh, you find one closer to the missile bay at this level, and it seems to be mostly open. Over here, Javalt. And Javalt walks over, and uh, so I guess we're all going down. All right, you head down another flight of stairs and find yourselves blocked. It seems that the engineers before you have kind of excavated a kind of roundabout path to the uh to the cloud actuator generators uh that like goes around a bunch of the debris because this level is big and full of that you can see just where metal has been crushed inwards by the force of the impact and where giant rocks are poking through the bottom hole of the ship uh and this path around it kind of takes you through they there's this like bathroom facility off to the side that the path kind of like cuts through the wall of that until finally uh, you push through the last bit of the soil and sand and find yourselves staring at two big old, kind of very sleek-looking Pegasus machines, half buried in, in soil. Okie doke. Yes, yeah, that's your problem. Yep. Is there any lighting down here? Um, How good is the lighting ba- down uh, here? Basically, the engineers have kind of set down uh, some basic lamps. Uh, the light of uh, Flotsam's pick but would probably be brighter. Do have a flashlight as a utility tower. That you do. Oh my goodness, it might actually get some use. <laughs> Jibolt whips out his flashlight. All right. Uh, you're able to see things pretty clearly now. And yeah, you've got these two big old, actually very sleek looking, very modern looking uh, cloud generators of some kind. And you can see how these are connected to the bottom of the ship, how they would basically generate clouds to fill up this part of the ship so that it ba- it basically supports the entire weight of the ship and allows it to travel through the skies. But uh, seeing as they are just kind of uh, a little bit broken from the impact, you know, shaken loose, uh, disconnected from the power, and, you know, 
you know, probably in desperate need of cleaning and just general excavating. Uh, and you'd have to clear out all the debris from inside this hole and patch up the hole, patch up the multiple holes in the hole. Right, this should take about, uh, three hours tops. Not with just two ponies. And some of this stuff is very heavy and embedded deep into the earth. You're going right. to need, uh... Let's focus on getting this engine working. Flotsam, can you fly up there and attach that thing to that thing? Flotsam does so. <laughs> you attach a thing to a thing. Roll mechanics to attach a thing to a thing. Can I, um... Mm, this doesn't come under weapons repair, does it? No. All right. What's my mechanics? Uh... Have a detail. There. 23, you managed to successfully connect the thing to the thing. Oh boy, I'm making progress. Um, I was, uh, hmm, checking my utility talents. Oh my god, Craggy's a borrower now. Oh. Let me just see what that entails real quick, because I just remembered that. Besides it, we need to dig this thing out, then repair it. Oh, no, wait. We need to dig this thing out, then get all the dirt out of it, then repair it. Mm. And then connect it to the rest of the ship. Um, hmm. Yes. Uh, sorry, I, I, I zoned out for, for a second there. What, what did you just say, Weaver? Uh, Javolt was saying, dig it out, clear it out, fix it, and attach it to the ship. Um, Flotsam kind of looks around and kind of examines, um, the, 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 um, the way that, um, the equipment is kind of buried and such. Um, and do we have, what do we have to contend with here? Is it rocks, soil, sand, that kind of thing, did you yep. say? Pretty much, uh, rocks, sand from the deserts, uh, some, like, plant debris as well, uh, and just uh, earthen soil and rocks. I mean, this is basically the part of the ship that got really kind of buried. And the cloud actuators are buried as well? Uh, they are half buried. Um, it's like the they're kind of towards the back of the ship, and as the ship crashed and broke through the bottom hole, it just kind of sent a bunch of dirt surging through until okay. it kind of half washed up against the actuators. Oh, man, some, some diamond dogs would be great right about now, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, in the meantime, um, Flotsam is going to uh, identify some of the larger rocks um, that are in the way of, um, you know, making particular progress with, uh, with the mechanics and is going to use uh, structural instability, uh, weakened substance, I should say. Ooh. Um, I can use this five times per day. Um, the preparation time is ten seconds. And uh, for one minute, the target object becomes less sturdy. Uh, for example, an iron bar might bend like stiff rubber, or a sturdy door might shatter to a well-placed blow. So I'm wondering if I can break up some rocks um, for flavor using um, well-placed small explosives. Um, yeah, basically you can do that. Can I just do that five times to... Um, to to adv advance the cause of clearing out the... Yeah, because yeah. I don't think I'm going to use that for anything else today. No, no, yeah, that sounds perfect, actually. Uh, <laughs> and you're able to you're able to weaken being... five of the biggest, like, most <laughs> biggest obstructions in the and whole uh, in, in the whole bottom hole. And uh, Javolt sort of casually waves that Raven, calming her down, and says, she does this all the time. Um, she's also, um, in between doing this, she's going to say to Craggy, Craggy, see if you can borrow around and make kind of, um, make some, some of the, um, the soil shift near those big round things, okay? She points him towards the, um, the cloud actuators. Craggy looks like he's about to start drilling at all the tasty looking rocks in the room and at your command starts happily digging through all the dirt and soil. Not not quite uh, not quite uh, <laughs> uh, following your commands to the letter because he's just having too much fun. But that's fair. Round in a roundabout way, getting the job you want done. Every so often, she kind of glances up and 
you know, if she's <laughs> sees like um a, sees Cragadile tail poking up from the dirt <laughs> and just kind of grins happily. And uh to basically set the charges and do that uh takes most of an hour, I'd say. Okay. Of careful demolition and very steady, slow and steady cleaning and clearing out. Uh by this point, uh Silver Wrench kind of makes his way down with uh, his uh, with the lamp just kind of going um hello i didn't blow up anything important what i thought i heard some yes it's us detonation control detonation he i didn't break anything makes his way time. through the maze of soil and rocks that there's still kind of a substantial amount of at this point look out for the burrowing crocodile oh 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 okay he uh makes... Hi, silver wrench. hey guys uh so He's got kind of a handwritten list uh, in one of his hooves, and he's like, "Okay, so yeah, you definitely came through. Uh, you've got uh, you got pretty much everything else we were looking for. Uh, we got cloud actuator, which we're gonna strip for parts and hopefully put in that thing once we clean it out." He points to the two that you guys have been working on for the past most of an hour. I think I can actually fix that. Yeah, yeah, that you're, you, you guys help be appreciated on that. Um, the lightning weapon, we're gonna. We're gonna basically try to like convert one of the gas cans to see if we can try and make it into some kind of lightning variant, and maybe try and take off the trigger mechanism so it basically just kind of works on its own. But I mean, we're, we're, we're just trying to figure out defenses. We're gonna have basically one gas can and one lightning can, and I don't know. Um, the battery, uh, we're gonna the battery that was in that bunch for the power source. We're gonna put that towards the shields. Good idea. Um, the Mister Handy we found we've already we've already taken out the sensors and gyroscopes and that we're gonna put we're putting that in the sensor suite in the in the mainframe room and on mm. the outer holes so that it's getting you know telemetry and whatnot. Uh, the crystal ball is the crystal ball is uh, we're installing that the uh, thrusters at the back because that's a, that's a magical device back there. It's force magic and the crystal ball is kind of a focus for for the engines there. Or at least for the for the spell there to kind of amplify it, um, and yeah, he looks around down there and says, "So the rest is to kind of get a bunch of uh, metal to repair the hole once we can clear this stuff out, and then Our plan is to, uh, electronics to connect uh, basically all the systems back up to the mainframe so that we can get full control back." Our current plan is to activate the cloud actuator, get this thing lifted off the ground, maybe move it to the side. So we can clear things out of the bottom of the hole and then patch it up. Huh. That could work, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, is the cloud actuator unburied now? Um, you've got you've gotten a fair amount of the dirt kind of pushed away, uh, but it's still very, very dirty, and it's been left that way for who knows how long. Every part, will, it'll probably need to be, like, completely disassembled and clean to make sure it's... I have a MacGyver thing. A MacGyver thing? Yeah, one minute prep time and, and appropriate materials. Any item that can fit in a ten foot cube is completely repaired. Um, that would be enough to basically completely repair one of them. Ah, uh, well then I can use I can use it twice because I use it's under enchanting, so it's three a day. I flashlight is one, but so you can get to work on that. Just uh, right. cleaning out and repairing all the all the parts. You'll you'll still probably need the act the cloud actuator to be brought down here to replace anything that's just way too broken. But, yeah, I suppose that's fair. And they they're still cataloging that. They haven't brought it down yet, especially since there's only one really narrow entrance. Cloud actuator in in one piece is just way too big to bring down here right now. Right. I, hmm. Watson can go help disassemble. Yeah, you can, or she can or she can stay down here and help clean. Either way. I also well, there's, there's only the... there's only so much cleaning you can do other than getting rid of the really big rocks because can... the the big old holes in the ship are still being plugged by basically the earth. Mm. Um, Flotsam asks Craggy to keep loosening the soil around the cloud actuators and um, listen to Javolt if um, Javolt tells him to do something. Craggy, just in Craggy case. doesn't seem pleased with the idea of of uh, <laughs> being separated from you. Oh well, don't you want to have fun in the in the dirt, Craggy? I'm just going to be up there doing boring deconstruction stuff. Craggy sees your point. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back before you know it. Just be good for Javolt, okay? Don't uh, fight anything he tells you not to. Craggy just uh, dives back into the sand he's currently playing in. Flotsam just kind of looks genuinely happy. Oh, he's such a happy little Craggadile. Okay, 
Silver Wrench, um, can you can you tell me or show me where the other cloud actuator is? I can help deconstruct it. Uh, yeah, sure. We could use a little bit of help on that. Um, you two, Javolt, right? And what was your name? Uh, Raven. Right. You two gonna be okay with the with basically you're gonna be touching that up for a while. Is he gonna yes. be okay with the crocodile? What? All right. Um. Yeah. We'll. Uh, I'll check back on you guys later. I'm just kind of running around right now. Yeah, you're like everywhere at once today, Silver Wrench. I'm. I'm. Pas- I've, I've basically been become the impromptu coordinator for all this because we basically got like twelve repair projects going on at once right now. Twelve work orders. It's. It's lucky we've got so many tech-minded ponies here all of a sudden. Definitely, it's a nice place to be for for tech and and tech ponies. And I'm gonna stop talking now. Do you do you need technicians elsewhere? Uh, Javolt gives a look at Raven. I mean, more working in more places. Probably everywhere, but I can't think of like a single thing where you'd be better there and not here. I mean, this is like the big project right now. So, right, if you can kind of get work started on that, that probably be where you're best right now. All right, uh, Javolt goes to uh, the cloud actuator and starts working on it. He's not using MacGyver yet because he doesn't have the pieces, but you know. Yeah, all right. Just basically getting some advanced work done, so it's easier when you have to do use MacGyver. Good luck! Should I roll mechanics for that? Um, nah, I can just basically take ten on that. Right. And does Raven just take the other one, I guess? Uh, yeah, basically. While Craggy plays around you. Uh, Craggy, could you do me a favor? You see all that big rock over there? It's kind of blocking a lot of the path. If you can maybe clear that out so that ponies can walk easier through that, that would be good. It's unclear whether Craggy understands the words you say. Oh, that's interesting. I can or use mimicry to uh, communicate with Craggy somehow. <laughs> Wait, you have that too? <laughs> yeah, she's got it. She's had it since day one. <laughs> Oh, Mimicry. <laughs> That's how she's been talking this whole time. You want Igor to? Okay, yeah, you can. You can. You can use that utility talent. What is? What is with <laughs> this? Talent, what is with this Batman utility belt you have all of this? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Dude, Igor's what's, just what's sort of hovering the over the craggy battle, mimicking. Igor's hovering over Craggy and mimicking uh, Flotsam's voice and saying, "Go here, go here." <laughs> and and Craggy listens about half the time because he's just having too much fun. <laughs> Eventually, you can kind of steer him to get the job you want, which is basically clearing a path. So yeah. Oh God, I'm just imagining Craggy nomming on a giant rock. Yeah, yeah. That basically. Yeah. Talk about your jawbreakers. Yeah, he's a he's a growing <laughs> Craggadile. So, uh, you are led back upstairs to, uh, basically, not Blinky Shop, but they've kind of sent out different parts to where they need to go while Powder Keg and Blinky finish setting up the shop again. Uh, and you're taken to where the cloud actuary, they're kind of studying it, inspecting it, and starting to take it apart slowly and carefully, because this is kind of their one shot of this. Fair. And you work Time on- for Floss to come in and ruin everything, then. <laughs> and you work on that for a while, and I'm not gonna make you work. Uh, oh. uh, and that- that takes another, uh, in total, since you arrived at Skyfall, uh, about probably three hours have passed. Yeah, that sounds about right. And as you're finally starting to kind of catalog all the pieces of the cloud actuator and tearing apart and inspecting, uh, you get a uh, you get a telepathic message from Zenkarn. Huh? What's he saying? Uh, he's saying something along the lines of, uh, uh just to, just FYI, uh, we're bringing home some hellhounds. <laughs> just thought you should know. <laughs> Is this direct from Cuteless out of interest? Uh, no, I'm just trying to basically guess what he would, uh, what he would say. Fair enough. Probably something even more, uh, rude than that, but, but yes. Flotsam just kind of stops in the middle of what she's doing and is like, what? <laughs> And I think that's about as much as I wanted to accomplish with the session, so I think we're going to call it. That was, oh, man. that was really good. Thanks, bud. Yeah. Woo. I love how you, you did, uh, you, you, um, I love how well thought out the, um, the shopping list, um, uses for all the things we got are. I noticed I didn't really say anything about the RC car. 
I think the fan theory is that um, Silver Wrench just wants one to play with. (laughs) Uh, He managed to find one, so quite pleased with that. Um, But yes, well thought out. Yes, very much, much thought very out. (laughs) So, um, yeah, thanks for doing this, you guys. This is kind of interesting to do. Um, yeah, you guys want to you guys want to close it out? Yeah, which bit do you want, Javel? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This has been Fallout is Dragons. Tune in next time for a tale of true love, grave danger, and cephalopods, and we may actually get the city flying. I don't know. <laughs> so what? If, oh, never mind.